Hey guys, Buildzoid here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at an RX 460 Sapphire Nitro PCB. So this is one of the custom RX 460s that you can go and buy, uh, you know, buy right now. If you're interested in the performance, FPS, and thermals of this card, there is a review down in the description below the video. So you can just click on that if you want to know uh, performance metrics and that kind of thing, because in this video we will only be covering uh, PCB components, PCB quality, and, you know, that kind of thing. So, with that out of the way, let's get to it. First things first, uh, the main VRMs on the RX 460 Nitro are core voltage, which is right here, memory voltage, which is located right above the core voltage VRM, and the auxiliary rail, which is located down here. Now, we will not be going into too many details about the auxiliary rail, because it's not really important. It's not a high-power VRM. There's no real good reason to push a ton of voltage through it. But we will cover core voltage and memory voltage and all of those. The other VRM that I should note uh, that I'm not covering on this card is the 0.95-volt rail, because um, apparently it's so low power that it doesn't actually need a full uh, loadout of VRM components, and so I haven't managed to find it since I'm only given pictures and it's really hard to uh, find. Either way, you do not have to worry about the 0.95 volt rail, because there's never, almost never a reason to actually care about that VRM. Like, really, even it, even when doing, like, LN2 overclocking, uh, you don't have to worry about it, generally speaking. So, it doesn't matter that I'm not covering it. So then, let's um, look at the most possible, well, arguably the most important VRM located on the card. So that's the core voltage VRM right here. So this provides the bulk of the power for your GPU over there. It's a four-phase VRM. It uses Sapphire's Black Diamond Chokes, if I'm not mistaken, is the name for them. Uh, they're slightly different design to improve thermals with the, you know, the ridges on the top and all that to increase surface area. Uh, there's four of these, so that tells us this is a four-phase design, because we also have, of course, four power stages. Um, so, power stages are basically all-in-one VRM components. They combine all of your usual VRM components into one large IC, like you can see here. Uh, these things are from Vichay. These are SIC 780s. They are, they are capable of as much as 50 amps, and you really shouldn't actually run them at that because the data sheet says they can do 50. Um, but if you actually look at the data sheet's specification graphs, they lose a lot of their efficiency by around 35 amps current throughput. So that puts this VRM at around 150 amps maximum current if you don't want to completely throw the efficiency out the window. Um, and 150 amps is actually completely overkill for a card like the RX 460, because this is a 75 watt TDP by AMD's, like for AMD's recommended spec. Um, the Nitro is an overclocked card, so it obviously draws a little bit more than that. However, nonetheless, uh, 150 amps is way too much for a card that pulls around 80 to 90 watts. Even if you overclock it, you're gonna be, you know, maybe in the 100, uh, 100 something watt range, and this can do 150 amps. Okay, this can do current, that's not watts. Watts, you could probably push around 200 watts through this VRM, or more, depending on how much voltage you actually ask for, uh, ask it to output. Speaking of voltage, um, you really don't have to be worried about damaging the VRM on this card, because the voltage levels you'd need to actually achieve those levels of current, so around 150 amps, on an RX 460, um, you'd be looking into the well over 1.4 volts range, and that's just, you know, not useful for any day-to-day -day things, because for day-to-day -day usage it's uncoolable, and even on liquid nitrogen, most uh, of the new 14 nanometer uh, gl uh, Global Foundries GPUs do not scale above 1.45-ish volts, so yeah completely, completely overkill. However, this VRM does have its own, uh, does have its benefits. This approach to the design with the ridiculously overkill components means that the VRM does deliver much higher efficiency when it's not working and it's, you know, peak uh, capabilities. 
and it overall gives you better thermals and those kinds of benefits. So that's all very well for the core voltage right there. Um, one thing to note is like you may be thinking this VRM is like, you know, I just said this VRM is completely overkill, so you might be wondering how much does this actually cost because the RX 460 Nitro is one of the most expensive RX 460s you can buy, and this is a budget card. Um, well, it's supposed to be a budget card. This VRM actually, like, these power stages, you can get them for a dollar if you're buying bulk. So, there's four of them, that's like four dollars worth of actual, like, expensive components. Chokes, capacitors, uh, especially these kinds of capacitors, are relatively, like, those are all cheaper than those, uh, you know, power stages. So, basically, that whole VRM might cost around eight dollars, maybe? Something around there. And this whole card costs a lot more than any other RX 460, so um, the PCB does not really justify the price point that a Sapphire has placed this card at. Now then, moving on from the core voltage up here, right, we have the memory VRM. Uh, this is made up of two individual, like, separate MOSFETs, not a full power stage. So we have a high side MDU-1514. This is from Magna Chip. Uh, so this is a uh, Magna Chip uh, MOSFET. It's rated for... give me a second. Um, yeah, so it's rated for 66 amps at 25 degrees case temperature. So that would be the component is running at 25 degrees. Uh, Sapphire opted to not put a heatsink on the memory VRM. Now, this might be kind of concerning at first, but bear with me here. Assuming a, you know, ambient air temperature of 25 degrees and no airflow, these things can handle 22 amps. And this is a memory VRM, so mostly it's relatively high voltage application. So, you know, 22 amps, 1.5 volts, that's 30 watts for memory. Um, you're not really going to be seeing that much power draw through it. Also, it's the high side phase. Uh, that's the high side MOSFET, so it doesn't spend all of its time actually being conductive. Um, so it can actually yeah, probably handle more current than the, like, the continuous rating is like the worst case scenario. So it can certainly handle more current than, you know, 22 amps uh, through the whole VR, uh, through the whole actual VRM. So the low side MOSFET is an MDU 1517. This can handle up to 30 amps. Uh, in the same stagnant air, 25 degrees uh, conditions as the MDU-1514. This actually spends most of its time conducting current, because it's the low side MOSFET, that's what it does. And again, it's completely overrated at 30 amps, and that gives you about 45 watts total current, you know, 45 watts uh, power capability for that VRM. And that's assuming some really bad temperatures, because uh, the airflow from the heat sink of the Sapphire Natro actually goes over that VRM, so the case temperature for those components will probably be quite a lot lower than uh, what the 25 degree ambient temperature rating uh, assumes, because that rating actually assumes a case temperature of 125 degrees. These really shouldn't be hitting that unless you have very, very high internal case thermals. So if your case is really warm, yeah, they might get there. But even at 125 degrees, you don't really have to worry, because there's way too much, you know, they're significantly overpowered compared to what they have to do. So finally, uh, down here we have the auxiliary VRM. Now, the auxiliary VRM is a minor VRM. I can't actually... Uh, get the component numbers for it. It doesn't really matter because this is one of those VRMs where, like with the 0.95 volt VRM, you literally don't have to care about what it does. This one is one of those where you don't really want to push it very far because the auxiliary rail is the power supply for the memory system in AMD graphics cards, and that thing is a lot more fragile than the majority of the core logic. So too much voltage on this VRM will kill the chip, and the VRM as it is designed will perfectly hand, will handle, you know, uh, it'll perfectly well handle the amount of uh, voltage that you can set it to through the Wattman software, and I do believe you get uh, voltage control for this VRM. Um, so that covers our VRMs here. Uh, for the controller, AMD is using the 
on semiconductor NCP81022. Um, this thing is relatively easy to volt mod, but for certain reasons we are not going to cover that in this video. Either way, it is a true, you know, it's a 4 plus 1 phase uh, voltage controller. In this uh, card, it controls the auxiliary, so basically it sends a PWM signal over there, and it also controls the core voltage, so down here. So it controls those two voltages. This thing is uh, capable of being controlled via software. We've seen, we've seen that before with other cards using this voltage controller. It's a well-known controller. It's been used over and over and over and over again. Uh, so, yeah, software voltage control should be coming for it very, very soon uh, if we don't already have uh, plenty of voltage control available. Wattman apparently allows up to 1.15 volts. Um, it shouldn't be too long before Afterburner allows something like 1.4 or 1.3 volts. So, again, uh, you know, voltage controller, nothing to complain about. It, it's running a four-phase VRM, it can produce four phases of PWM signals, and it can also power the auxiliary rail. Um, on the back of the card, we find the voltage controller for the memory, and that's over here. And this is one of those, uh, this is a fixed uh, state voltage controller. Uh, you can't control it via software, it's dumb as a brick. Um, it doesn't really do, like it doesn't have, uh, I do believe it doesn't even have any kind of major protection capabilities, though I guess it should have at least over current. It has an integrated driver circuit in it, so you don't actually see a, a driver IC uh, for the memory VRM. You only got your high side and your low side fat, so that, that's not included because this uh, voltage controller right here takes care of that. This is a fixed frequency, can't be controlled by software. It is very easy to mod, but for the same reasons as before, we, I, I don't have quite enough information to uh, explain the mod uh, in detail for this controller, so we'll just leave it out. And that really covers everything there is to know about the uh, RX460 Nitro from Sapphire. Um, the PCB is very, you know, um, I mean... Yeah, you could say it's very high quality. It's certainly well above the minimum requirement for ma powering and overclocking an RX 460. You have no worries, basically, with this here PCB as it is about, you know, uh, damaging the VRM with too much voltage or too much power or too high core frequency. Um, really, there's nothing to be worried about with this PCB because it's just very overbuilt and very over-engineered. On the other hand, it is also extremely expensive, and as I mentioned before, that VRM does not really justify the price point because it isn't re like it's rel like it's still using relatively cheap componentry. Uh, the other thing to note is that Sapphire actually left out a lot of things on this uh, PCB here. Like here, we have a mask for a second BIOS chip. Uh, that's not on. Uh, here we can see that there was supposed to be a button to control RGB or maybe BIOSes or, you know, something something of that type. Uh, that got left out as well. So this got downcosted pretty significantly just from what you can see on the PCB that's missing. And uh, the price point does not reflect that. But it is a very, very, very high quality PCB nonetheless. I just think the card should be a little bit cheaper. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe. There's a Patreon link, so if you would like to support uh, Gamers Nexus, click on that, and, you know, you can uh, support us monthly here. And that's that. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll get to do more of these.